In this video, we will give an overview of the dictionary data structure. We will give a definition of this data structure as well as the applications and the available functions. And then finally, we'll describe the different ways in which a dictionary can be implemented as well as how those implementations affect uh, the algorithm analysis. So what is a dictionary? A dictionary is an abstract data type other names for a dictionary may be associative arrays or maps. Um, basically, a dictionary is a collection of paired keys and elements which allow the user to find the pairs in a collection. Uh, finding an element is relatively easy because the elements in the dictionary are, it's assumed that they are sorted either alphabetically, numerically, or some sort of user-defined scheme. Some of the applications of a dictionary uh, include address books, uh, mapping internet addresses, uh, of course, actual dictionaries, or anything that um, you know requires that anything that you could pair a key with an element. Um, such as if you were making an address book and of course the key would be the person's name stored alphabetically and then the elements would be like that person's phone number or maybe their address. It just kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, and then you could um, even get more complicated. Let's say if you were making a military application that stored several hundred military bases um, you could store them by name or by coordinates, longitude la or latitude, depends on, you know, what the user wants to do. Like many other data structures, the dictionary data structure has functions like add and remove elements. The add function allows the user to add new key slash element pairs to the collections. Uh, these pairs do need to be sorted using the key. So um, the delete function allows the user to get rid of the key as well as its associated element. Um, there's also a reassign function. This, allow, this function allows the user to update their data. So if you have an address book, um, then you could go through and basically find a person by name and then change their number if you deem that necessary, which um, if you have, if this is in a phone, then that would probably be a useful function to have. Um, we also have find functions, which basically retrieves an element out of the dictionary. Um, and it, it would just return um, the element when you give it the key that you need to have. Um, there are also other functions that you can have, but um, it's up to the user to, if they want to implement it. It's not necessary for the dictionary's functionality, but some of them are, you know, seeing if the dictionary is empty, printing all of the keys, or printing the elements, as well as seeing the size of the dictionary. A dictionary data structure can be implemented using other data structures, such as a linked list, an array, a binary search tree, and a ha hash table. Um, a linked list or an array would be the simplest way to implement it. However, maintaining order in these data structures can become difficult and may take a longer time in a large collection of items. Uh, a binary search tree is a structure that is adequate in keeping order and it is one of the more preferred implementations. And then we have the most efficient way of implementing a, a dictionary, which would be to use a hash table. Uh, this is because it's very easy to keep order and it already has that sort of key element structure that the dictionary needs. Then moving on to the big O analysis, as we've discussed previously, the implementation of the dictionary can have a major effect on the average and worst cases on how long it takes for a dictionary to do something. Um, we have like with the linked list implementation, uh, the average and worst case scenarios would be big O of N when adding, deleting, and finding. 
And of course, this is because the worst case scenario is you having to look through the entire list. Um, then we have the uh, binary search tree where adding um, the worst case scenario would, the average case would be log of n. Um, and then of course the worst case would be having to search through an unbalanced tree and having to look through all of the items. And then lastly, we have uh, the, the ideal implementation, the hash table, which as we've discussed in class, we know that uh, hash tables have pretty constant search times and adding times. So, um, and this is because all the program has to do is use the hashing function to go directly through the key and retrieve that particular value. Of course, you may have to deal with elements having the same key, but even if the dictionary doesn't find the element at the first index, there will be a nearly constant running time. So this has been our description of the dictionary data structure. It's a very useful thing depending on what you're doing.